um, you know, uh, this happens in trials for anyone who's uh, been a prosecutor in the city for any amount of time. Jurors are human, they get sick. Um, obviously, the family was prepared to allow the jury to deliberate with 11 jurors. It is understandable and allowed under Maryland law, so long as defense counsel consents. I don't begrudge defense counsel for not wanting that. They're obviously you know, hoping for a mistrial. They're hoping that this is a holdout juror. Um, but we're going to respect the process and allow it to unfold. Um, you know, as I've said before, they've waited a long time for justice. They've been waiting a little longer. Um, they're going to respect the process and be patient. Um, the defense counsel's decision to object, you can't begrudge them. They're fighting for their client as hard as they can. And, you know, they're hoping that this is a holdout juror and might, you know, hold out a little bit longer. Um, but it's hard to speculate about what's going on back there. Um, and in a case with a lot of emotion, a lot of um, you know, public visibility, you want to respect the process and let the jurors do their job. So they're not feeling any more frustrated with this latest development, so they're still being patient, and is that your... You know, they were in remarkably good spirits. I, I was frankly worried that they would be frustrated, but they seem to understand that this is part of the process. Um, like I said, they waited a very long time, a little longer. They want the process to be respected. They want the jurors to have a chance to do their jobs. Um, they were prepared for, as Maryland law allows, uh, the 11 jurors to conclude their uh, deliberations. Um, but defense counsel has got to fight for their client. If they're hoping that this is a holdout juror, then they're hoping for that. Um, who knows what's really happening back there? Um, but when a juror is ill, um, you want to make sure that they have a chance to be better. You want them to be fully able to concentrate and do their job. You don't want anybody back there, you know, worrying about being ill, getting other people uh, ill. So it's understandable. What if this juror comes back tomorrow with the doctor's no. uh, I mean, at that point, do you think it would be time to do a mistrial? Or I, I know it may be hard to say. I'm just curious. It's a, look, it's a good question. Mistrials happen. Hung juries happen. Um, oftentimes, these cases have to be retried. That happens in Baltimore with some regularity. Anybody who's been covering cases knows that in high-profile and low-profile cases, that happens. It happens in murder cases and it happens in drug dealing cases. Um, but that is an important decision that the judge will have to make about the appropriate time for that. I think it's a little premature. Um, it's a murder case. There are murder cases that have four or five days of deliberations. Um, these are important cases. We want the jury to get it right. Um, and the family wants to respect the process to make sure that the jury gets it right. Could it be a benefit too to allow whoever's possibly on the fence to, to make a decision? I mean, this could be a blessing in disguise for the family, maybe? Uh, like, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's a little bit of a fool's errand for us on the sideline, particularly uh, a former prosecutor, to speculate about what's going on in the particular minds of particular jurors. Um, these cases are important. The jurors are taking them seriously. Um, that kind of conversation behind closed doors is something that we have to respect. If Juror 5 doesn't recover by tomorrow, is it a possibility that they could go forward with just 11 jurors? Look, under Maryland law, it is permissible, but I believe it requires the consent of all parties, and I can understand why defense counsel might be holding out hope that a mistrial is the best they can get here. This is hard to explain, but the defense had said that they, they requested a mistrial today, and then they came out here and they said they only requested the mistrial because they thought the prosecution was going to ask for a mistrial, so they asked for it first, thinking that the ju judge would deny it for them, but not the prosecution. What do you make of that explanation? I mean, look, you saw it during the course of the trial. Defense tactics are a time-honored tradition where they throw everything up against the wall. They're not bound by the same rules of professional uh, you know, uh, elevation that a prosecutor sometimes is, um, that a prosecutor is. And so, you know, just like the defense saying, oh, he wasn't there, but if he was there, it was self-defense, there's always tactics and gamesmanship involved in their work. They're doing their job. I mean, their job is to throw up against the wall everything they can in good faith. Um, and a jury's job is to see through it. And we're hopeful that the jury is doing its job and we're going to respect that process. Do you think the prosecutors have proved beyond reasonable doubt that he's guilty in the first degree murder? I, I mean, the grand jury agreed, the prosecutors agreed. I think that when you've got video evidence from multiple perspectives showing the defendant who's been multiple times identified in the DNA when you see him retreating to get the gun, when you see him retreating to pull down that mask, when you see him following the victim with two other accomplices and shooting
shooting them five times, at least three times in the back. Um, that's not fear, that's first degree murder. And um, you don't always get video evidence of the murder. You don't get to see the defendant follow the victim. You don't get to see the defendant retreat to pull down that mask. You don't get to see uh, the victim defenseless, struck by a rock, being shot five times, three times in the back. Um, you know, if it wasn't for that video, uh, if it wasn't for the cooperation of the citizens, um, it would be a he said, she said case, and those cases are very difficult. Um, one person can claim it was self-defense, but when you see the person following the victim, when you see the defendant pulling down that mask, when you see him stepping away to get the gun, um, that doesn't look like um, self-defense anymore. I will remind all of you that uh, this young man was out there squeegeeing, no question, just like many others were, but he didn't have a mask on except for about 90 seconds. And those 90 seconds were right before, right after he had gotten the gun, right before he decided to follow the retreating victim as the victim was returning to his car um, and shot him five times, three times in the back with two others uh, assisting him. You know, that should be enough evidence for a jury to come to. If it was that good, so the, the if it was that clear, why didn't the, um, the jury come let me, back? Let me, let me ask you a question. Why didn't the jury come back with a guilty plea if it was so clear like you saying it was? My practice has always been to let one journalist finish, and I yes. promise I'll come Give to you. Give me okay? a second, sir. So prosecuting attorneys started off their closing arguments with basically saying that if Timothy Reynolds would have never gotten out of his car, he would probably still be alive today, right? Does the family acknowledge that at all? The, the family has said first. from day one and that they wish that their loved one had gotten out of that car. Um, at the same time, um, we all I'll act say it question like first. that once in a while. We sort of we I lose guess, our school, since but the penalty for that is not yet. And the decision maker for that is not a young man with a gun who decided to pull down a mask and follow him. Um, that's not justice. It's not supposed to be justice uh, on the streets. It's supposed to be justice in court, which is what we're looking for today. Yes, sir. The question was that when, when I, if it was so like. Say again. We don't all act like that. No, no, we don't. It, there's no question, as the okay. family has said. That's that all right. They wish their loved one would not have. No, the question uh, is, the question that I have is, since she lays it out like that, right? Since she lays it out like that. Once that happens, uh, walking back. Since she lays out the squeezy work and all this, why did he come back? Why is it taking so many days? Because they got evidence. They got no evidence. Under the law, they come back. That's not justified. But. Thank you, guys. Yes, sir. Now, the question is. You can come down here yeah, because yeah. I guess he don't want me to ask you no, this question. No, me too. No. I was just trying but, to respect No, no, the... not you. Oh, oh. She don't. But the question that I asked you, that since it was like you played out, right? Since you said that uh, they seen all this on video, clear footage and all that. Why didn't they come back with a guilty plea instead of waiting for the deliberation so long? Why, why didn't the defendant plead guilty? That's a great question for the defense attorneys. No, no, I didn't say that. Uh oh, I thought you said guilty plea. But I said, why didn't the jury come back with a the verdict was guilty if it was laid out so easy like you said it was, yeah. in a clear view and understanding? Why wouldn't the jury come back with a guilty plea? Look, I, you, you know this. I was a prosecutor for a long time, and uh, it's hard for a prosecutor from the sideline to second guess how a case was presented. Um, but cases take, um, you know, jurors approach cases differently. Uh, jurors want to have the time uh, and the respect to do their job the way they want to do it. So we may want to hurry them up, um, but that's not always the easiest thing. Um, I've seen one hour guilties, I've seen one hour not guilties, I've seen three day guilties, I've seen three day hung juries. Um, I don't know that the measure of time is a measure of the evidence. It's a measure of their process, and you want to respect that. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. So my point was, right, the same question that I asked uh, the root, I asked of, 
in front of uh, Challenge 2 tried to like just ignore what I asked them, right? Challenge 2 tried to like um, try to see, try to play me out of position, try to over talk my answer, my question that I asked the root. So that was real ignorant what she did and I didn't appreciate that how she um, tried to over talk me because my my question was what I said was before hers and she tried to like try to cut me off you see what I'm saying but I wasn't going for that <laughs>